Filkin is dying for you. His body riddled with spear wounds and a crossbow bolt. <laughs> I'm sorry, Filkin! He can't hear you. I know we've only discussed it in the chat, so none of the, the players know what this is about to mean, but you could say that Kyron really Filkin that up. <laughs> nope. I got filked. That's an inside joke. They hopefully will never understand. The first and the last will not let you die today, Filkin. And I'll move over there and... Um... Kyron will. Pardon? But Kyron will, apparently. <laughs> yeah, Kyron will kill him. Uh, <laughs> um... And I'm going to cast Spare the Dying on him. Okay. And so you auto-stabilize. Excellent. Oh, I love spells I don't know about. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Matt, if you have your 5th edition book, you should definitely start looking up healing rates right now because you're going conscious. You might also want to think about using one of your hit dice to recover HP. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, all right, that's Soren. There are two kobolds standing over Filkin now who are very close to Soren. It looks like they're going to move to engage him quite quickly. Narder, however, you've got this one unsuccessfully trying to stab you. Um, I'm going to hit it with my mace. Okay. Which is 10 plus proficiency bonus plus strength. I, it's a d20, right? So oh, wait, that's what I mean. So D, yeah. yeah, D20 plus plus. So that's I think a D20. You said 10. And I was like, that's really high. Oh, well, Shazbot. So you basically just reach over your shield and just bonk him on the head. And, and it does. It does. Blow. Yeah, it does 1D6 damage. So let's see. Oh, no. Okay, so you give him a light grazing wound. There's no blood coming out, but you definitely dented some of those reptilian scales. And he gets a murderous fury in his eyes as he stabs over your now open shield and tries to get you in the face. And he fails horribly. Uh, and let's see here. We've got two of them on Soren, so they're both going to step in and use their pack tactics to negate their sunlight disadvantage. A 17 and a 21 on Soren. Uh, the 21 hits. I have an 18 armor class. Oh, man. So the first one, like, steps in, and he just, like, tries to stab you. And the other one's like, oh, sweet, an open blow while you're distracted. He doesn't even, like, do any fancy things to throw you off. He just general stab right in the back. <clears throat> For three points of damage. Okay. I'm going to see if I can have a reaction to that. Yes, you do, actually. And, and yep. I... Get your Thunderbolt stuff. Yeah, I just need to verify... Uh, he has that... to make a deck saving throw. I had to look this one up because it's crazy okay. how immensely powerful it is. I so said, by the first... You got a 17. Ah... Uh... So you, like, raise your hand up with the power of Castle Grayskull, <laughs> and this lightning bolt comes out of nowhere, like, clear sky, first day of spring, just a lightning bolt comes out of nowhere, and the cobble, like, without moving, his whole body seems to just shift five feet backwards, and the bolt hits, and there's just, like, dirt flying everywhere, you can see Soren's, like, covered in the flying earth, and the kobold's like, Meow! So even on a successful saving throw, they take half damage. Oh, yeah, so that spray of dirt hits him right in the face, right <laughs> in his precious, unguarded eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, so he's going to take, what, four damage? Yep. I'll say and five. I free... You knock him okay. unconscious immediately. All right. So, like, he sails backwards, and then he gets hit in the head with a flying rock, and he's just like, blump, falls over and drops the spear. And I'm going to point the Warhammer at the other one. You're next. Chiron, you've got uh, one undamaged kobold engaging Soren a couple feet away from you. You've got the one just past uh, Narder that you're standing at also engaging. What would you like to do? Well, since <clears throat> Soren just uh, 
uh, uh, challenge the one, I would never want to step on his toes. I well, would... there were two there, and he just wrecked the first one. Oh, right, and then he said, you're next to the other <laughs> one. So I would not want to step on my colleague's toes, so I will turn around and shoot the one near Norder. Narder. Okay, all right. We're doing some uh, Luke Hang-style call <laughs> shots. We're at the beginning of Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung, like, uh, kills his brother. He's like, your brother's soul is mine. You will be next. Whoa, okay. All right, you crit. So roll your damage twice, right? Or is it you do full damage on the first one? I change it up a bit. Not sure, this is 5th edition, so... Yep, let's look up critical hits. I spent too much time watching that uh, Acquisitions, Inc. podcast where they did two different ways. I believe it's just double damage from what I read yesterday. Is it double damage? Double dice. All right, let's do it. I think it's double dice, but not strength dex, other stuff. Correct. How about I look it up? Yeah, that sounds about right. Critical hits 196. Hit me with this incredibly painful shot. So you fire this thing over Narder's shoulder as this kobold is like leaning forward to attack him over the shield, and you catch the guy full in the face for eight points of damage. You don't just knock this one unconscious, you actually, like, shoot through his eye out the back of his skull. He's dead. Okay. You've got uh, three unconscious or dead kobolds and one very dead kobold. What would you guys like to do? I'm going to... Uh, oh, yeah, the victory st- music plays, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stabilize uh, the kobolds with the my cantrip, Save the Dying. Okay. Spare the dying, and uh, start tying them up. If there's any rope around, do you have any rope? I uh, ask. I, I pull uh, Filkin to his feet. Say, do you have any rope? Uh, if he's conscious, right? Uh, yes, I have an explorer's pack, um, and I know that that has 50 foot of hemp rope in it. And I probably should write down the rest. But yes, I'm, I'm positive I had rope. I also have 50 feet of rope. So. We could, uh, perhaps there is a bounty on these uh, bandits and we could claim a reward. Thank you for saving my life, my, my, my new friends. Um, I must, one bit of information before we do anything else, that what those kobolds were spying on was very private to the gnomes and it's um, a very sensitive matter. Uh, it it could gain you either great wheel or woe, depending on how you be play things. Um, if the safe bet is to just simply say we got ambushed by four kobolds in the forest and not mention anything about that, um, but since you've saved my life, I I will reveal more if uh, if you feel necessary. But I will warn you, it's a dangerous path. I will take your word for it. If it's a dangerous path, then path, then uh, I would like to avoid it. I Thank you. I think- I've walked oh. the path of danger before. I do not wish to walk that path again. I'm very relieved. Uh, it's um, a sort of delicate matter among my people. Not all the Gnomish Collective are completely unified, as people may think. Do the kobolds have anything of value upon them? Ah, you're checking over the kobolds' body. Well, of course, they had four small spears. They also had about uh, two silver and two copper pieces, all in copper piece, of course. It's about 22 copper pieces. And uh, there's some paperwork. There's some rude, uh, crude drawings, and they're written in draconic with some notations. You also find more paper and some charcoal. So Filkin is at zero hit points, but... Um, after one hour, I can spend a hit die to roll some more. Yep. Am I able to take actions at zero? I don't think or am so. I? I think you're unconscious. Okay. All right. I will. Um... The guy's taking a short rest to wait out the hour to get Filkin back awake. Well, so I, I mean, I can, I have, I, I can cast cure wounds, but it burns a spell slot, and the spell economy here is pretty tight. Um, is that like, how you're explaining it to everyone? You're like, I can only cast so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, I get really tired. <laughs> I'm really versatile, but every time I use some of that versatility, I lose. The I need a nap. I need a nap. 
is basically what happens. Um, he also were following uh, Falcon's lead, so. I was wondering how long it would take someone to point that out. Without his guidance, <laughs> will we be able to find our way? And we do need to get... All right, I'm going to burn a spell slot on Cure Wounds. I don't know how many that does or anything, but I will use it. Okay. Um, hang on, I can look it up. <sighs> I'm gonna have to buy this book. Oh, uh, Adam, do you have it available? I know you're also a Healy cleric type. I I am. I was looking up stable to see if you're actually conscious or not, and I'm trying to look up the. Uh, but I'll look up uh, cure light wounds right. real quick. One one d eight plus spell casting modifier. So. Um... Sounds about right. Hit us with it. Take your six. Six. Fantastic. Okay. I think that fully heals Filkin, right? Uh, Filkin has seven. He's he's right. a tough tough old gnome. What does uh, your sure light wounds look like, Narder? Um, I think it's a, a um, it's a very private. Uh, there's not a lot of flash to it. it I reach down, I touch him, um, and a uh, little little bit of static electricity feeling, and uh, he gets better. So, Filkin, uh, as you come back to consciousness, you have this brief memory of a male and female angel standing over your body right before you wake up. Uh, so, Filkin comes to and uh, has that little conversation uh, now that we had about the, the caravan. and That was the... Uh, I don't know what you did to me, but I, I saw a male and female angel standing over me... Um, I uh, have always felt that I've had a, a guiding presence, that that I'm destined for greatness. But I, this is the first time it's occurred to me that, that there might be two, and that there might be. This is very confusing. I'm not quite sure what I saw. We'll talk later. <laughs> that was okay. super cryptic. We'll talk <laughs> sorry, later. Sorry, yeah, sorry. He's like. Sorry. I spent my whole life searching for <laughs> destiny. I just had some supernatural bullshit happen. Narder's like cleaning off his mace. We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my friends, or my new friends, my, my rescuers, uh, if you think it is uh, important to check, uh, these four kobolds probably don't have it, but I do have the ability to usually detect magic. Uh, it doesn't always work the way I planned, so um, you might want to stand back if you want me to check for magic. I can only do it once per long rest. And it may be a waste of time with these. I think these, uh, with these uh, these minor um, minor supplies that we have found that uh, there would be no need to search for magic on these things. Normally I would agree, but uh, I think there was some supernatural element to how quickly they struck down a tough veteran like myself. Uh, <laughs> however, I will save the spell if, uh, you know. All right, did, but yeah, did, did for the get, record. <laughs> and did we loot anything? I missed the looting. I was looking up rules. Did we got we... Uh, four spears and 22 copper. Well, and charcoal, just... uh, charcoal, paper, and uh, some notes in draconic, I believe. Can, can anyone adjust. can anyone understand this uh, these scribbles on the paper? I cannot. You can certainly make an intelligence check to see if you understand the drawings, if not the notations or the notes. They look like scribbles to me. I think. May everyone make the roll, or? Oh yeah, sure. Or perhaps oh, they just yeah. look okay. So, Chiron, your eyes briefly turn entirely red. Almost like you're bleeding from them. And you feel a, a voice in your head telling you exactly what these scribbles mean. No! I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, hey, Arthur, I, uh, I, for I did not apply my two extra languages from Acolyte. 
I think at this point it would be inappropriate for me to pick them. Do you want to suggest two? I have common Draconic and Halfling. Is fine. So Elven and Draconic are, are two. Like Elven is basically the French of. Uh, it's like the diplomacy language. Everyone that's anybody speaks Elven, and Draconic okay. is also <clears throat> a p- pretty big one. Okay. Well, then I do speak Draconic. I think someone's giving that a shout out in the chat. Multudai. I did not pronounce that right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kyron, you know, you got your telepathic link from this booming voice that comes to you. And you're briefly reminded of your secret mission in the process. Yeah. Let let me ask, what are you guys doing with these bodies? I mean, you've got three unconscious, not dying kobolds. You have definitely taken the time to keep them unconscious. And one dead one. You're just leaving them out here in the sun to rot? No, I was going to uh, tie them uh, to the nearest, you know, tree or any type of, you know, uh, post. And um, let's see. I was trying to think of something fun. That, That rope is expensive. Really? <laughs> Hemp rope. <laughs> so, uh, Michael is Narder, correct? Yeah. Uh, N- Narder, uh, I saw that you were able to read their their writing. Would you be able to possibly talk to them? Um, I don't want to tip any. I don't want to give them any information, but I'd be curious as to whether they accidentally stumbled across that gathering to the south, or whether they were directed to spy on it. Uh, but when I say interrogate, I don't mean anything. Sure. Um, yeah, I, fiendish. Can I? Yeah, can I read? Can I read the notes? Yeah, I these, sent you. Uh, oh, okay, I sent you what they mean. These kobolds are not <clears throat> alone. Uh, they they are not alone, and um, Vilkin, they're they this... have found whatever it is that you're, um, whatever it is you're afraid they've found, they found. Well, I guess is, it's time to. This is an organized band. And should be dealt with mercilessly. There's a request well, for Jim and Matt there from the chat. Just felt like passing that along. What was the request? I, I... Why is that directed specifically at me and Matt? I don't know. I'm just going to take a drink from this empty cup here while you read that. <laughs> yeah! So, is that the Arthur, Timo hat? It is. Arthur, you rock that you... shit, bro. Why are you wearing such a dumbass hat? Yeah. I think it's dumb looking ass hat. <laughs> the answer is because I'm a fucking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> if he thinks this is a dumb hat, you're dumb. <laughs> PSA. Now you know. <laughs> Where you know. And knowing Real men have beards hat. and hats, my friend. Beards and hats. Um. Looking for a hat right now, Matt. I'm I have a hat that I want to wear. That I should have brought. It's I'm never really to me. I'm like camera functioning so I can wear one of my silly hats. Exactly. Everyone should have Abs- a hat. Right. Stream oh, shows. we got another request incoming. We'll just uh, wait a couple minutes before we pass this next one along. So, uh, we were talking about the Gnomish Collective right there, the gathering yes. of wagons and the kobolds. My new compatriots, I think I should um, inv- uh, let you in on some information that I normally wouldn't share, but we've been bound or bond- bonded by battle, blood, and um, buffoonery on my part. Um, that is a meeting of a slightly gray market nature. Um, not all... With, with the Empire, the Elvish Empire won the war. Uh, the gnomes had supplied both sides. You're probably aware of this. Well, um, that meant some were outcast outright. Uh, others simply chose to be, um, and there's so there's kind of there's there's the rebel gnomes, there's the the loyal gnomes, and there's kind of those who are pretending to be both sides. It's a bit of a sticky wicket, 
Um, what is happening there to the south is that some of the uh, rebel gnomes, who normally stay far away, but have access to some very valuable materials uh, as they explore east of Hub, are making a uh, semi-rare visit to trade with some gnomes who are on the upward appearance loyal gnomes of the city, but really don't have a problem doing a little gray market business. Um, I would imagine that if we got involved, it's possible that either side could want us dead for discovering it. Or you could turn it to your advantage and try to play one against the other and get a reward or something along those lines. I don't really know. I don't want to betray either side, but at this point, you've saved my life, and uh, whether I want to or not, we're now all involved in the possible. I, don't, I mean, we could be branded as traitors. We could be branded as loyalists and killed by either side. It's a bit of a political thing we've gotten ourselves into. Yeah, I mean, there's a, those are the only two options. Either you're traitors or you're loyalists. There's no in-between. Uh, I tried to steer us around from it, um, but I apparently didn't do quite a, a good enough job as, as your guide. I take full responsibility. Uh, we should probably leave. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't I mean, know what we should do. Are, are, so, they, are they prepared to defend themselves from other bands of kobolds? That's, uh, I think of them as being quite capable. I mean, so right they, now they... you see about sixty figures moving around down there. Sixty gnomish or gnome-like. It's hard to tell height from four miles away. But if 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 you think we if you don't see a reason, you know, as a gnome, if you don't see a reason to get involved, <laughs> uh, I'm willing to trust your judgment there. I, well. Um... If it's up to me, and I don't think it should be, but if it's if it were purely up to me, I would say we should, now that we know there's a definite risk of cobalts, and we don't know whether it's four more or 400 more, um, uh, at least I should go try to warn them, if not all of us. Um, I, I loathe the thought of leaving you all here and wandering off alone four miles, but um, I, think, I, think we, I feel a duty towards them, uh, even though my instinct is to run, to let them know that they're being monitored by kobolds and in danger. Well, regardless of politics, I just think that's the right thing to do. Just as long as we don't falcon up their uh, plant. <laughs> yeah. So that's, if we... That's, my mother used to say that all the time. I still don't get the joke. But yes, uh, the um, I am worried that if we walk up, they're going to either shoot us as spies for the loyalist, or uh, we'll see the wrong face, and they'll have to kill us because now we know their secret contacts, and... Um, I don't know how to do this intelligently. I've never been accused of having an overabundance of caution. So, well, any you're, advice? you're you're a gnome, mm -hmm. though. You're, they're your people. Just tell them what you saw, and then if you get in trouble, just holler, and uh, we'll uh, walk four miles. We'll be behind you. Yeah, that's right. If I get in trouble, I'll just do this. <laughs> It'll be our secret sign for trouble. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to endanger you any more than you already have. I feel like I've gotten you mixed up in something that was not part of uh, this, uh, this, what you signed up for. Uh, so Filkin will... Um, yeah, Fil Filkin will walk... <laughs> Filkin will walk four miles alone to try to warn the gnomes uh, and not get killed for being a rebel and or loyalist. Um. Okay, we'll cut to that in a moment. Uh, currently, we have Soren tying up three kobolds to a tree, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Now, are you guys doing anything else? What about the dead body? Um, if we have the supplies, um, do I have the ritual um, religious knowledge how to properly uh, basically let it soul depart? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will perform a religious a ceremony brief, um, and then, uh, you know, if there's if there's possible to to bury him, I don't think I have a shovel in my pack. But uh, the have most learned, have you learned nothing? I know, I know. I just <laughs> took the starting like gear. Grounding again. I, I just took the starting gear. I didn't even think about, uh, you know, trying to get every nook and cranny. Hey, that's why I'm trying to, you know, earn some money. Buy a shovel. So what you would know is that the god of death has dominion over everyone who's died, and that only by calling a soul back from death using, like, raised dead spells 
can you end their literal eternal torment? So dying is pretty serious. Once you're dead, you're tortured for the rest of eternity. And so you kind of give this guy a quick blessing, like, I hope your torture isn't so horribly bad. It's kind of a nice ceremony. You, you try to dig a hole for this gnome. I guess you've got the time it takes Filkin to gnome walk eight miles in a circle. So somehow you get it done. I will assist in the burial process. Okay. And in so doing, conduct my own final rites. So you just like lick, lick your fingers or something? Yeah. Okay. All right. You feel a lot better afterwards. What, it also disgusts you. What, what are we planning to do with these other three? <clears throat> They're tied to a tree. Are we just going to leave them tied to a tree? gets back, assuming he just goes there, talks, and comes back, they'll be awake. We know what they're doing, but we don't know why they're doing it. Because they're kobold. Yeah. Yep. Awesome I think... hat! Yep. If, can someone speak kobold? Kobolds speak common and draconic. So I, okay. Yeah, I, can, I speak both of those. <laughs> I think everybody I think... speaks common. Well, one of, that... one, of, one of my character ideas was for the one who doesn't speak a word of common, so... <laughs> I think we should uh, try to f see where they came from and learn more about them instead of just slaughtering them. Well, let's get yeah. to Filkin while you guys are discussing that. Filkin, you know, you kind of trudge up to the, the caravan, and they spotted you coming. You know, gnomes have, like, outriders. And a particularly well-dressed gnome that has a gold-chain necklace with like a, a pendant that has a set of scales on it comes up to you and he kind of bows and, and says uh, well met brother how are you this day <laughs> um, not, not terribly well I suffer from wounds uh, luckily I was partially healed by my uh, some allies um, not too far off um, I'll, I'll let you know right now I want to be up front that there are a few allies nearby um, I'm not alone um, but I thought it most respectful to approach alone as a gnome, since they are not of our kind. Um, we were beset by kobolds uh, several miles to the north, um, and in some paperwork, I now realize uh, over the last four miles of walking that I forgot to bring, they outlined some plans that would probably be really valuable if I had brought them. Um, but they seem to be organized, and they're very aware of your presence. Um, I strongly, uh, my instincts as a gnome, of course, were to run away from the situation, but I felt a duty to our people and the collective to um, warn you that there could be a, a large attack in, in progress. So, I mean, you're just spilling out all this information. He stands there, he nods through it all, and then he says, I have not yet completed the ceremonial gnomish greeting, friend. Uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an outlander. I uh, don't uh, spend much, many time, much time among the sylphs, and I do not... Um, remember yeah, many of our custom. Please continue. He says, I am Caravan Master Biggins Clockcaster of the Clockcaster Caravan. May I ask who you are, friend? I'm Filkin, currently unassociated with any uh, um, circuit. So he, he kind of takes his hands and makes a circle and says, One circle, friend. One circle. <clears throat> That's why I'm here. You say that there are kobolds watching our caravan. We came across a group of four, what appear to be uh, advanced scouts. Um, at first, we dismissed them as mere gatherers or wanderers who had come across you accidentally. But when searching through their possessions, we discovered that they were under orders from um, some sort of organized larger force. Um, we don't know their size or when they will arrive, but they definitely seem set upon um, trouncing you and taking your valuables so he tosses you a bag that has uh, 20 silver pieces in it. he says uh, friend I, I thank you for the information uh, perhaps you have been too f too long away from the circles a true gnome trader would know to have gotten payment for this information first however I thank you in the name of the circle uh, 
for your timely interview.